TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we probably won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Keep in mind, if you missed the live and you wanted to replay it and fast forward it and just see what you missed, go to twitch.com. T-H-E-E underscore L-I-T underscore O-N-E. Uh, don't forget, we do got merch as well. Yeah, get me. And we got a Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, the regular schedule stuff. That is, you got to pay for it. But we do post stuff on there that we watch on Patreon. I mean, on Twitch. That we just post for free on there as well. Street Gangs, Season 1, Episode 1. Crime Documentary UK. Working in the community, going into schools, people have been feeding back, things are slipping. What did he just say? Working in the community, going into schools, people have been feeding back, things are slipping back to the old ways. Things are becoming more violent. I'm hearing that for we cousins and brothers that are rejoining gangs. Old ones being resurrected and new ones being formed. We wanted to go on a journey to find out why that is. But in order to even attempt this, first of all, we need to speak to gang members. So I'm in Preston Pans, just outside Edinburgh. A place the police have dubbed an anti-social behaviour hotspot. My boy accent is probably one of the thickest I've heard in like the last two years. I'm really concentrating right now. This tunnel was the location of many gang battles. Violence isn't like you see on TV. Anytime I was walking into a fight, you'd have the adrenaline flowing through your body. It's a sick mating feeling. And you didn't always come out on top. Sometimes you were the one that ended up with a sore one. I don't know why gangs fight, you know, in our community, you know, what is the enmity, you know, it's just postcode warriors, you know. You're for there, we're for here, that's enough, that's reason enough, you know. It doesn't even make any sense. It's not like there was a process of other than to say, you know, they get them over there. It wasn't like an enemy in a war, you know. Literally, the fact that they were for there and you were for there is reason enough. And here in Preston Pans, the young team know this only too well. What's that one, bro? Nice to meet you, mate. Nice for me, it's what's bro? Nice to meet you, bro. Good to meet you, boys. We've had to obscure their identities because of the ongoing trouble with the police. That's your scheme, man. Ah, yeah, it's yeah, I find that. So what a lot of people don't understand, right, is what is that gang? Would y'all rather watch Top Gear than uh, Banged Up? Okay, and uh, 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 Mo Docky. I want to see them five subs. <laughs> Hey guys, be sure uh, that... Top gear it is. What you talking about? No, bro. Be honest, they're not family. You know what I mean? Like, they stick up for me any time. They see if I had beef, they'd back my beef. Like, you know what I mean? That's how it goes. It's a day to day life for us. It's a day to day life. life. It's the way you get brought up. It's the people you get brought up with are in the way. And it's the place you get brought up in and the shit you see. It's a graft, isn't it? Aye. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly a graft, man. My memories of looking back, right? You run about doing drugs, right? Just, it felt like hard work, man. It is, it's a lot of hard work. It's hard work and it's the stress you need to put up with. So when you're losing one of your best pals, you'll end up dead or you'll end up in the gym, mate. That's it, there's no even, there is no, it's a no win situation, mate. There's no. But I know what about the post. Uh, I go, I go back there, I go back to the weekend, man. And the cells? Aye. Quite a far behind there, too. Yeah, so, aye. So, I So, I got a blade in there. See, back in my day, right? Everybody carried LBs, fuck aye, bags. Bash, aye. aye, is that still the case? Nah, it's fucking rambles now, man. Can't say carrying fucking. Sanis, mate, they can't do what I mean. Aye. Every fight oh, you go to, there's there. guarantee a knife that side's involved in that fight. What really struck my chord with me was when I fell murdered somebody. Aye. You know what I mean? Aye. That was the moment when I was like, fucking hell, man. Aye, it just gets, gets real in a different way, you know what I mean? Aye. My best pals are on the show. Aye. Aye. Nine years or something like that. Life sentences. Aye, we took them off. Aye. So the thing is, if you do get a part of a dial on it, it's all about retaliation. You just want to go out and fucking do the taxi with me. That's how it keeps going. That's how, that's how the cycle continues, basically. I'm a former gang member, and I'm Fairdrey, which is a tough place. 
But when I walk up to a, a bunch of guys wearing balaclavas, I feel fear. Everybody, you're, you're meant to, that's the point. You know? So it's no trying to get behind the mask, you know? No lie, fear keeps you alive. Fear is a natural thing that the body does. Or the, or the mind does. But it, fear will keep you alive. You know what I'm saying? If you coming into a lot of situations, like if I'm going in the jungle, I'm going with fear. Because fear gonna keep me away from these animals that I don't want to be around. Who's that? Who's that person behind us? Uniform. We're trying to humanize people. You know, these are human beings. They, right? they've got needs and wants. They come for a family. They, right? however turbulent that may be, if you ask them honestly, they would still tell you they want the same outcomes as any other person. They want a job. They want a home. They want a car. They want holidays. It's not unreasonable. You know, these things are just normal wants and needs. That's what these kids want. What well, keeps pulling you back? It's just it's the adrenaline. It's, it's the adrenaline. It's the adrenaline. It's a routine, mate. It's a routine. See, I'm going to see if you went away to jail for a year and came back. This, this place would be the exact same. Everyone would be doing the exact same thing. Everyone would be doing the same thing. So it's hard to get out because like, you're in this environment every day. You're surrounded by the same people. You're doing the same thing. It's hard to get away from it. You know what I mean? It's so easy to get dragged back in. What do you think young ones are thinking? Are they, are they getting involved? Or are they falling back? It's worse, they're worse, they're worse than what you're like. Oh, sure, like, it's, it's bad. I'm looking at folk that are sitting running about committing crimes, I think, and I'm like, I was sitting in my house playing Minecraft at that age, and now they're sitting <laughs> running about, rolling about with hammers, knives, and yeah, trying yeah. to smash every cunt in their fucking way, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's not what you want to go to, and you don't want to be in the jail when you're, like, 18, 19. See these young ones now that you're saying they're out of control, do you think they'll take that for our places? Alright, alright, don't use it. Yeah, you don't want to be in the jail at any point in time. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I get it. Like, you, you, your, your circumstances lead you to do certain things to be able to eat at night. That's got a big impact, Joe. That's got a big impact. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, Joe's not a big impact. It's a big impact on every country, to be honest. It's like, it's a bad influence at the end of the day. Folk just listen to the lyrics and are like, oh, I want to be like that. But it doesn't work like that. Like, it does not. Oh, this is Scotland. Behind the balaclavas, these are just ordinary kids looking for a way Obviously. out. A better life. But I was struck by how sure they were the drill music plays a part in gang violence. But what is drill music? How does that affect young people? How recent is this episode? I thought this was older. Drill music is a type of hip hop known for its violent and dark lyrics and is often linked to gangs. We have a strong drill music scene already established in London. The movement has travelled north to Scotland, bringing with it its roadman fashion in masks, hoodies, and balaclavas. And now, Many Scottish artists are adopting this style. After my chat with the young team in Preston Pans, I'm keen to ask an actual drill artist how much blame the genre should take. How do we feel about the current? Can he just rock up to our The current state of drill. Was it on mute? If it was. Drill artist and start questioning them. <coughs> so I've got access to a music video shoot for a rapper called YD. It's been directed by a videographer who specialises in making drill music videos called Iona. Right, Iona. Hiya, how's Good it going? To meet nice you. to meet you. Good to meet you. Is, is that it, your gear? Yes, is it all? Nice uh, one. Grab that for you. Come and meet YD and see what the music video is all about. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> She out here collecting her bag. Go ahead, then. Why these for lock in in Edinburgh? A housing drill is definitely falling off. It's all the good. Anybody who's really rapping and living what they rapping, they all locked up. Um, and like, I don't know whoever. I don't know if there's labels out there or what's going on, but they probably see like it's a bad investment. <laughs> You make a drill song, you get popping, you stay in the streets, you get locked up, and there goes the money you put into that artist. It's gone. It's gonna stay a few miles for the city center. Unfortunately. I've seen drill music videos online, I own it. We've got guys in balaclavas, 
drugs and alcohol, pit bull done sometimes <laughs> even, done up motors and a smoke. Seeing a 13, 14 year old, do you think you've got enough mentality to be able to separate facts from fiction? No, definitely not. Especially when like, we kind of glamorise it as well. Like we're showing you a glamorous lifestyle, the cars, the models, the apartments. It's a lifestyle that they want to get into. They don't see the struggles of having to go out to sell drugs day, night, 24-7. They don't see everything else that may come with it. Do you have a few intimidated? No, um, a lot of the guys have balaclavas on. At the end of the day, they're buying a service from me. I'm providing them a music video. Yeah, she man, she gang into, in lock -end area. She gang into the money. Gang is a strong word. I see it as a group of friends. Like, define a gang. Do you know what I mean? How can you call a group of friends a gang? What about women going to the bingo? Is that a gang? Do you know what oh. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen, she make a valiant point right there. All right, big man. All right. What's happening? Good to meet you, mate. Hey, Jamie. I want to find out if YD, as a drill artist, thinks the music can take any of the blame for violence. There's a lot of focus on the negative aspects of drill music. Violence, drugs. Does the danger of the scene ever worry you? Of course, it does. I think violence is becoming more of a trend because it seems more cool to be violent for some reason. Why do you think that is? I hate to say it because I'm a drill artist, but drill art, uh, drill from London influenced it a little bit. Just, you listen to these people, the big artists in London, they glorify that lifestyle. And for kids like us in a seaside city, I feel like... I wanna, I wanna, let's get some clarification. I don't think it's glorification in a lot of these cases, like, like, I think it's people just really telling you how their life was. It's like therapy. Like now, some of them people who really ain't living like that or really had never been a part of that situation, yeah, you can consider it glorification. But for the most part, like people who really had to live like that, they know it's not nothing to glorify. They know they're not proud of that. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to make a way out by telling you how it was or how it is. And if you're overly interested in it and you want to partake in it, so be it. With drugs and nitties everywhere, junkies everywhere, that's a different lifestyle. A lifestyle that looks cool to us. It looks interesting. Music makes it seem like it's a good lifestyle, is it? It's definitely not. It's definitely not. Sitting in, in the freezing cold all day trying to find customers and people like Vigor D wearing big chains and, and they think it's, it's the way of life. If you ain't shot nobody to shot. It's a way of life that comes with a price. He has had criminal convictions in the past. Yes, I do live a lifestyle that's not the best lifestyle, but it's a lifestyle that I've been brought up in. And if you've not been brought up in that lifestyle, it's not a lifestyle you want to be living. See what I'm saying? Must think that I'm an extremist, get on there, mate, man, see Jesus. My young one, dread old demons, send them there to give him a beating. This beef, it needs some season left for a bit. Have you ever had any trouble with the police? In a police interviews and that, they will mention lyrics that can be used in a song or if it uh, sometimes has anything to do with the case, it can be brought up. So you, you've been in an interview as a person of interest, being uh, spoken to by the police, nothing to do with drill music, and they've quoted your lyrics back to Yeah, you. but most of the interviews I'm in, there's no comments, so... Sure, 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 sure. How's the energy in that one, Looks sick. Cool. What is a gang? You too. I wouldn't say Lock End's a gang. It's, it's a family. It's more like we're all brothers. Like, you'd lose your life for your brother. You'd leave yourself bankrupt skin for your brother and that's that's what my gang is i think a lot of these young guys they mistake a gang for a family but the reality is that street family you know is is a dysfunctional family you know they've not always got your best interest at heart it's a seductive thing you know like they go 100 percent a dysfunctional toxic family 100 percent that'll rob you if they at that, that first opportunity Summarized portrait of what gangs are, what that life is, isn't it the reality? Chatting, bro. Aye, aye. Just meet me at Walking Garage about five, six o'clock. That's where we'll be doing it. Right, bro. Love, love.
See if my pals actually woke up early, it would look all right. It's nice to have to do something in the daylight, It's always night time, eh? Yeah. Fuck it. I'm ready. <laughs> Doing bad, you won't see and see. Right, fuck around, I won't be nice. See, guys, back the chain, you know that we fight all the bro and we'll turn that me nice. You say you'd, you'd give your life here, gang. Does that mean you would? And here I go, really listening to the lyrics, what he's trying to talk about. And I will say, if I was rating that song, I'd give it like a three. <laughs> be violent for your pals. I'm not a violent person for no reason. If you cause violence, harm, or threat to cause violence and harm to any me or my pals, then, then I, I would. I would. Bring out the fire, bring out the heat, and bring out the heat, and rise it and beat it. Hey. <laughs> Violence isn't always a choice, you know? It seems like a choice, you know, and it's easy for me to sit and say, oh, it's, you know, you choose to behave in a certain way, that's a conduct, right? The reality energy. is, if you're standing with all your pals and somebody comes up and starts to fight with you, it's very difficult in that moment of adrenaline with alcohol, with an audience, to not be violent. I was violent, you know? Do I think I'm a bad person? No, I don't. But I was involved in a culture of violence, you know? Anybody can be violent in the right situation. Facts. You know? And if you look at the situation these kids are in, like YD, you know? Violence is almost inevitable sometimes. Facts. There's no doubt in my mind that alcohol played a big part in my own violent behavior. That was me in high school. I'm 16 and turned my boat a buck fast. Looking back, I live just as chaotic a life as white. He said that was him at 16, necking that bottle like that? Was that, that wasn't hard liquor though. That was like wine or something. What was that? He does. A cider? I want to get an outside perspective on my past. So I've come back to my old school, Cobridge High, to meet the inspiration behind a major character in my book. My old head teacher, Mr. Ronson. I always described you as big, bright, and with a little bottle. I'm gonna be 100 with you. I can't go to my high school and point out one single teacher that gave me any type of life-changing advice, not one. For me, any of my teachers were not nobody I was looking up to. I felt like they was all there just to collect a check. They, not, they wasn't there to make a difference in a kid's life. Especially a kid like myself when I was a kid, so. I'm glad he has this experience though, for sure. And that, that could have gone either way because you didn't step backwards too often, was my recollection, that you were quite keen to be in the front line if there was anything kicking off. And that in some ways is easier to handle because you know what your actions are. He looked like, oi, mate, do we have a problem? <laughs> they're going to be, but at the same time, you had an imposing presence as well that must have, must have caused a bit of alarm to other children, I think. I was nervous about it, and I had, I'd spoke to one of my older uh, gang member pals, and he'd said, you ain't getting there, man, anybody gives you any cheeks, man, so, <laughs> right? And I wasn't nervous until I said that, because I kind of hadn't realised that I was going to get a bit of hostility as well, which did come, you know. But my education was peppered with exclusions. Yeah, I was out yeah. in first year on suspensions yeah. for silly stuff. And then, you know, it's a sliding scale that become more and more right. serious. And it takes a, a, a real superpower to see beneath that. When I left- Like a kid like me, like, I was like one of, one, in my particular high school, cause I transferred to schools out of where I originally lived. So the high school I went to, like, I was like the first, I, it felt like I was the first African-American kid there that was not from a dual parent household <laughs> who who didn't respect a male authority figure in his life like and they wasn't going for that they thought the answer was in school suspension 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 trouble 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 hey no y'all just perpetuating the situation y'all now y'all became the enemy you know what i'm saying y'all went about it wrong y'all i probably they probably have corrected it since but i personally hate my high school <laughs> like i can't i can't stand it like if I make it even like the slightest bit of bigger on YouTube, and they like, oh yeah, come back and talk to the school. I, I'm coming in with with the worst reviews of this school, but I'm also have that message, even with this being a very bad experience for me, from a not from a social point, but from the teachers and that type of standpoint, still turned out all right.
Your care. I was leaving with four hires. They weren't any great hires, but I had Danny for English and it was enough to get me into the University of Stirling. Miss Patrick shouted yeah. me over and she said, well done, young man. And she said, oh, let me tell you a wee story. You don't realise about staff actually get the results a wee bit early. Yeah. So we have a big meeting about it. And into the meeting came Mr. Rawlinson. And you put my results down and you said, there's the boy you threw away, got an A for higher English. He's got a Stirling University. Now you never knew I would know that. No. But let me tell you, my heart burst that day. <laughs> I mean it. I was only 18 year old. And I just, you built such value in me. When I didn't believe myself, the fact that others... See believed. what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Like that he that he's carrying this. He's a grown man now and it, it still resonates with him. They didn't have that at my school because he wanted to go, but he believed in kids. He believed, he understood him. He, like he said, he's instilled value in that man. Nah, not at the school I went. <laughs> Believe, Danny, was, was life changing. I mean, uh, you see, that's, that's where I think you're, you're too generous because that was just the start of it. Because what, what you got was opportunity to go on for the next bit. And that's what I always say to folks, you can only deal with with what you've got at the time and ensure that your part of it allows people to move into the next part of their life. And that's what we've got to transition them in. This is a W teacher. Where so was he in my high part. school career? What, what, what was going on? So the next bit was incredibly hard. And don't undermine <laughs> what you had to do to get to, to where you are. You know what? One thing I notice about people who really want to make a difference in their community, they take very little credit, you know? They're not doing it in a performative way to say, you know, I saved that kid. They're doing it because they truly believe it's the right thing to do. I gave them nothing to work with, you know. I gave them very little thanks at the time. They had no stake in saving my life, but they did anyway, you know. And that is true greatness. And that's what I'm saying. I didn't see no teachers like that that I came across. Not one. Now, I will say Mr. Chan, my history teacher, he was cool. He was even killed. He was an Asian man. He was even. So he like, so when I was came in his class, when I was coming in his class, he wasn't making an uproar, doing all this extra stuff. So it was like, all right, cool. Let me give him the, let me, you know, chill out. I'll do the work. <laughs> like, I, like he was cool. But that's the only teacher that I will ever like, ever mention by name. Ever, other, other, the rest of them was just trying to keep a job collected check in my opinion i think for me when i look back now mr chan though good job man good job at not being biased and not letting your your opinions of kids play a factor in your job <laughs> you just came in that mug did it never got an attitude never you could never see any type of dismay on that man's face or nothing Salute to that. You know, I see a young guy who was looking for a father figure. You know, my own father passed away when I was young. You know, masculinity isn't self-taught. You know, it's taught by a father or a father figure. Right? It's taught by older boys. You know, it was one of my friends that taught me to shave. And it was one of, you know, it was, it was one of my pals. It was a top man in the young team that took me for a pint in my 18th birthday. So they felt they fell into the role of father, you know. Subconsciously, I'm sure they didn't think of that, but that, that was the reality. See what I'm saying? Once again, a father figure is very important in your life. It's highly important. So if y'all out there, if anybody's out there being a deadbeat dad, cut it out, man. No matter how much struggle your baby mama give you, go ahead and get in that child's life because it's your fault the way he's going to be or she's going to be when she grow up. It's, it's you. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> The fumesy fathers. Same with a woman. If you keeping that man away from his child and giving him a hard time, relax. Because it's, it's going to be your fault too. <laughs> Sons and Gangs as a surrogate family is very strong in one of my favourite films, Ned's, by Peter Mullen, which was based on his own gang life. Don't do it, Ned! I want to find out how similar Peter's experience in gangs was to mine. So I've come to his home patch at Cardonald to get the low down. How you doing? <laughs> cool, I need to call you Mr. Mullen. <laughs> oh, well, if that's all right, if you don't mind. <laughs> How did you get involved with the gang? Uh, my brother had was, was already in them, 
and then I wasn't, I was a good boy. And it's very much what happened in the film. So I met a guy and he lived in the posh houses down there. Uh, one day went along, then his mum said he was there. Is Julian home? No, he's not here just now. Uh, do you know when he'll be back? He's at his aunt's, so he'll be late. And I looked up and he was at the window and I was really devastated. It was like, I don't get this. So on the walk back, I walked up here, which I'd never done before. And as I walked up, there was a big team of guys and they were all playing in the swings and acting on well, Ned Lake. Well, hey, man. Hi, a... One of them recognised me and went to you, Lenny Mullins' brother. Anyway, I took a chance to say his name and they shot themselves. And then one of them said, you should join us. And here in this very swing park was welcome. Whereas the other world was rejecting me. So, John, you feeling up with us? How are you? What do you mean, who are we? Who are we? Diva, man. People sometimes say to me, what was your initiation into the gang? Aye, aye. The initiation was you bought 10 flags, you bought a bottle of wine, you turned up with a tracksuit on. Totally. You were in. Totally. In my own case, I was in the gang, but I was a tourist. I was a wanker, you know what I mean? I, I did my bit and I could talk a good game. And 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 if if, if the currency is violence, then you're all in trouble. But what attracts anybody to a gang is that sense of belongings, everything. We all know within our peer group, nobody's fucking perfect. It doesn't matter. It's our group. It's our gang. It's like family. You can laugh at your family if nobody fucking else does. Yes. 200, they spitting facts right here. This is a good little documentary. Man's 30 or 40 years my senior, you know, and he's telling the exact same story. You know, and I hear kids and their teenagers saying the same gang. Oh yeah, no, it never changes. It's a it's a repeating cycle. Nothing's new when it comes to gang banging or being in a part of a gang or anything. It's all the same. No matter where you are in the world. Don't know. The origin story of a gang banger is literally the same. Across the board. Change. <laughs> what fashion they're wearing really just comes and goes with the times. There's a universal truth about gangs. And it's in finding that that you find out and interrupt them. You know, how to stop them. Gangs come from tough communities, like Cardonnell, like Cairdry, like Coatbridge. And at the heart of it is that until there's a plausible alternative for these kids in these communities, gangs will continue. They offer something that society doesn't offer. These are people who feel excluded, they feel neglected. And gangs, the togetherness, the belonging, the camaraderie of gangs becomes a street family. And that is a family, you know, that is dysfunctional and it, it harbors risk, but it seems worth it. Are these universal truths of gang life still relevant today? I'm back with Iona and YD and Lock End in Edinburgh as they film the final scene of their music video. And it looks like the rest of the troops have shown up. Can you get a bigger watch, by the way? Can you get a bigger watch, man? <laughs> Yeah. What's happening? Nothing, bro. Bro, thanks for being this, man. What's so good, man, so good. Right, but you've said, and others have said, I know a gang. Mm -hmm. Some of your boys have said that, right? What is a gang? A gang, I don't know. I can't kind of put a finger to it. You just see your pals, just, like, fight our gangs to... That's what a gang is, yeah. fighting over areas, but... I wouldn't call us a gang, like, I've, like... I could sit and tell you how long I've known this one here for, and 10 plus years, most of them. So I wouldn't call us a gang, it's family, it's brother. They said that they their own family, and it's a bit of brotherhood, mm -hmm. right? But say a, an old wife is driving by, right? And uh, she sees all you boys with balaclava, isn't it? It's not like an everyday, I get it. I get that people would be intimidated, intimidated by it. That's why I would never just walk around the streets with a balaclava. Like. Violence, mate, you still, is there still gang fighting goes on? Nah. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. say that. For some reason, this dude is giving me a vibe, like he's portraying something that he's not. I, I could be wrong, but he, I don't know. We're like maybe the middle age between that. Like all of that is coming for the 16, 17 year olds that were, like I said earlier, listening to the guy. Well, he might have been, but he's not 100%. When that, like, listen to the drill and that. So that's where that comes from. It's starting to get a lot worse. He's saying you're in the middle. What do you mean by that? Like I've been, 
wanting a name for myself. I've been wanting that life where I'm wanting to be the biggest gangster in Edinburgh and running about the streets causing havoc and but well, that's just not what I want today anymore. But I'm at a stage where now I want to come away from that and just leave all the problems behind, start getting. And that's what it sounds more like. When he speaks regularly, it's it's coming off as I don't want to do this type stuff no more. This is not who I am. So okay, I, all right, I feel it. Never and fucking mind. money and I can't get you over it. You've grown. You're growing up. A life, a nice house, like I said earlier, a car, being able to just live life, kick my feet back. Ability. Just try to make a, a life for yourself. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Try to make a better life than our, our parents had. Can you see how road out the, the street life? Mm, nah, and I. If my music goes somewhere, I. If my music doesn't go anywhere now. Nah. nah, is there a plan B? Get a job. Get a job? What kind of job? <laughs> no, bro. There shouldn't be a plan B. When there's a plan B, your foot is not all the way on the gas on your first love on the on the plan A. Because you're like, man, I got a plan B anyway. I got a plan B. It's gonna be alright, man. I don't need this to that's the mindset you're gonna have. I don't need this to be good, man. I got my plan B. It's for certain. Ain't no plan B's. It's only plan A's. For me, this is the plan. No choice, no other options. Working construction or something? No, I wouldn't fucking like it. You know, if if these kids in Barclavers are standing out the front of my house, would I enjoy that? Absolutely not. You know, because, you know, I'm a law-abiding citizen and it's intimidating for anybody. You know, and I've seen it with my own eyes when people walk past these people, oh, you know, they feel me. frightened and alarmed and probably rightly, you know? All they see is a gang of thugs. They I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. Right now, if I go outside in Florida, I'm talking right now. Even ten, like seven years ago, right? If I go outside and I see a group of people, and it's just me, keep in mind, if I see a group of people, and they got on a mask and, and, and things of that nature, I'm crossing the street. And hey, this is not about pride. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let's be smart. But you, I'm crossing the street. They could be Boy Scouts. But if they dress like that, I'm, hey, listen. Nah, not today. Today I choose survival instinct. What you think? You know that. You know. They, they know cross the street with it. You know, but actually, when you see a gang member and you see the community, you know, if, if there is an old person walking by, they'll move it to be, you know. There's a politeness 100%. and a kind of old, old worldliness about gangs, you know, there's a kind of code of conduct, you know, um, that civilians, if you want to call it that, you know, you don't, it's, gangs don't tend to attack just members of the community walking around, you know, that's, that's they fight true. each other, they fight themselves. But, and, and I'm coming as a, as a man who looks <clears throat> like this and, you know what I'm saying, so it's like... Think that I'm an extremist, get on there, mate. Man, see Jesus. My young ones, your little demons, send them there to give them a beating. This beef, it needs some season left. What bit of it? If all the issues want to get in this next one, watch, 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 watch. Oh, sorry. Just to let you know, the concierge has been watching you and it's phoned the police. No problem. Thank you for informing us. That's very good. You're not supposed to be up in that room. Okay, sorry. Sorry, we didn't want to cause anybody else harm. Well, it's take the ballot. I'm letting flares near the bin house. Sorry, sorry. 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 Sorry, Sorry, we didn't even Whether they'll come or not. Didn't even make a conscious disturbance. Right. Uh, right. 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 Is the BBC can ask for a free license? Of course. He wants a free TV license. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we guy wants a TV license. Come on, man. Know what I mean? Get in the community. You better hurry up. What are you doing here tonight? Um, I'm watching YD film his music video. Do you know, is he a pal of yours? Yeah, he's a very close pal. We grew up together. Do you feel part of the gang? Definitely, but like when it comes to like their violence, like violence and stuff, no. But like when it comes to them supporting me, 100%. Aye, so you feel safe around the boys, aye? 100%. They'll protect anyone around them. As long as you're close with them and you're good with them, they'll protect you. Evening, officers. <laughs> well, I got an officer. How's it going, girls? Depends. Uh, depends who you want to speak to. What's their 
I own up. Yeah, they know it's a video shoot. Damn, get up out of here. <clears throat> What's happened? Uh, the police have turned up, as always. The troops are scarpered. Yeah, just kind of killed with the vibe and the mood for no reason. I mean, they'll say for no reason, but yeah. <laughs> Cultural phenomena come and go. Right now, we've got drill, we've got grime, we've got English rap. But the reality is, Arla Stretch, appreciate you for the sub. You know, the community is the same. The three time, three sales, month street, appreciate right, it. Opportunity. What we've discovered is that these things will come and go. We're not blaming them. We're not pointing the finger and saying that's why gangs are here. We're saying that's how it is right now. But the reality is, the core truth behind all that is that these kids. Are neglected, you know. They're left out of society. They're excluded on many, many levels, and it's that exclusion which creates a fertile soil for gangs. That's what Program One's all about: fertile soil. Fertile soil. Next time, I'm in Dundee. No, 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 no. Next time, man. Tell them leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. These are like my favorite ones, man. Honestly, anything with like, like you know. G A N G, I'm gonna spell it because I don't know what they be on. Uh, it's easy to have a lot to say about it, man. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm gone now.